Hey! Hey, you spoon crafters and bush carvers out there. This is Max from Woodsman's Finest, and uh, today we're gonna be talking about another spectacular Sloyd knife, carving knife that I use for spoon carving. Um, you probably all know the maker by now. Uh, he has taken the hearts of spoon carvers by storm. But all jokes aside, um, this is a Reed Schwartz Sloyd knife. Um, and I want to present this little fella to you, to you today. Stay tuned. Welcome back folks. I think um, for this kind of video this perspective is really the best. Uh, I just want to take you through the specs of this thing and then we're just gonna get back um, and see her in action. Let's see if we can get everything nice and focused here. Okay here we go. So um, this is the Reach Words Sloyd knife or at least the blade is. Just a couple of specs here. Sorry for the noise, as always. This is my non spectacular Upper Austrian uh, stronghold. It's rolled around everywhere. It's a suburban countryside ish Upper Austria, so I hope the noise is not too bad. In any case, um, this plate is made from 1084 carbon steel, um, which is, in my opinion, and it reads as well apparently. Um, a very very capable steel for pretty much anything. 1084 carbon steel is known to be what you call a eutectoid um, steel. That means it basically has a very very optimum um, carbon content of 0.84 percent. What that does is it's quite um, it comes in quite handy when you heat treat these knives because at the point where you uh, where it reaches the critical temperature and uh, loses magnetism it um, also all the carbon is in solution at the same time the steel really lends itself to experimenting with it a little bit um, it really gets a very fine grain you can get incredibly hard and tough blades um, you know it's just an overall awesome steel. In this day and age where everybody is a little bit of a steel snob and um, everything has to be some super steel, some fancy name, these basic carbon steels um, you know, are getting out of people's um, attention a little bit, but um, they definitely deserve to get more attention. That's why I'm using a 1 and you know, 1084 a lot in my own blades as well. Um, in any case, we got a um, give or take 4 inch blade I would say with a nice rounded spine. Um, as you can see, we have a nice distal taper that is from I would say 2.5 millimeters to about a millimeter and a bit, believe it or not, at the tip. Um, it's nicely rounded. We've got these beautifully Focus. Um, we've got these beautifully filed um, surfaces, flats on both sides. Uh, you can also see that in the detailed pictures in the beginning of the video, of course. Um, Reed is definitely a great traditional craftsman, um, doing a lot of his work with hand tools and specified jigs um, when it comes to handles, sheaths the way he's mounting his blades and he's reading a lot about traditional craft he's learning a lot from the old timers and I mean um, you know early books about these topics just as much as I'm getting inspired by craftsmen and handles and styles of blades in Japan and other parts of the world I think Reed really 
is um, very interested in North American and Scandinavian traditional craft from long gone times. Hence um, the, the great birch bark building projects he's doing. Yeah, when it comes to Sloydnevs, he reads a lot of old literature. Um, my short stories always get really long. In any case, we have this nice distal taper. You can also tell on the bevel that there's a distal taper because, of course, the edge uh, or the bevel angle is the same all the way through, but we're getting a narrower bevel up here just widthwise than down here. Um, that's where you can see the distal taper as well. We've got a beautiful logo stamped into the sides. Yeah, that's about it. Have a good day. No, seriously. What I really like about this blade, um, especially in comparison to his earlier Sloyd knives, is that this one has basically a straight spine and a, um, a blade that has pretty much a continuous curve backwards. I'm not a big fan and I don't really understand in general, not only in carving knives, but as well in bushcraft knives that are supposed to be based on Scandinavian designs why we've got a huge drop point and everything and all the knives seem to crouch forward you know um, making it actually harder in a you know proper grip like this to to get a very efficient cut because everything is kind of crouching forward like a kukri and if you look at these classic bushcraft knives these days wood lowers everything everything seems to crouch forward I'm um, a little bit of a drop on the top like I do that on my own bushcraft knives a full tank focus as well because you know going into an animal I don't want to pierce what I don't want to pierce but especially in a Sloyd knife I don't understand any kind of draw point as long as it's not only really towards the tip to reinforce these very very fine tips so that about the blade shape I really like it I really think it's a great move that um, really changed it um, as far as the handle mounting goes in this case it's just a through tang, it's not glued in, I just carved the upper part just like Reed does it and then I just pinned it over in the back and this is about as much length as um, Reed gives you. It's, you know, when you pin it over I would say it's maybe four and a quarter inches, maybe a, a little bit longer what you get from, from the tang and this is maybe one of the only downsides um, people have reported and I really don't know why my camera wants to focus on the stomp always um, that's maybe the only thing where I have a little bit of criticism and other people had as well not a biggie though because Reed is of course very much responding to the carving community um, I would have liked to have a option for a longer tank but Reed said and he's really right about that um, the longer the tang gets, the more, of course, you get flex in the tang, and it's just not as, especially for his type of mounting, um, it's not ideal. I understand that. And you know what? In, to be honest, in carving knives and in knives in general, the whole pinning over, pinning, um, you know, putting pins through, all this kind of stuff, if you epoxy a knife in and you know, epoxying by itself would hold the knife already if you make sure to use the right epoxy and degrease anything. But putting putting them in with a the dowel method, what I do with my Yakut knives and pretty much all other blades as well, is bomb proof. Mm, that handle would, f you know, that wood would crack apart and fall apart because th before that epoxy, um, you know, lets the knife come out. So what I did here is um, using one of my own handle designs that I'm really fond of and that I'm using a lot on, on hunting knives as well. I used to not really have an index, you know, or some guard or some finger shawl in the front here. I did it on this one just to try it out and it's not getting in the way. I don't need it, but it also does not get in the way. Um, if I want to choke up on the knife, um, what I of course do a lot, it's not a problem. It's not a full guard that would get in the way. So it's just resting in my hand, gives me a little bit of an indexing not a problem but the more important part is happening on the back here I am usually contouring the top of the knife and I keep the bottom of the knife round I call this my dog leg handle 
the reason I call it that is that it's kind of having a crank in the middle here. I took that name from a traditional um, jackknife, pocket knife design. The reason I do this and why I'm really fond of that in, in all kind of knives that are really for hard work or for work in general and even on kitchen knives, it gives you a lot of control. So what I, I want to say by that is when I'm using the knife like this, and a hammer grip and a power for power cuts whatever I get a lot of support here in the back for my palm you know which is important because what I'm doing is I'm basically pushing my the back of my fist down to create the slope here that gives me a more efficient cut hence as well the blade design that swings back rather than drops down you know very very simple and anybody who's using a knife a lot would realize that that's where you can tell people apart who are using their knives a lot or who are just designing knives. So what I'm what I'm saying by that is gives you a good leverage here and a good support for the power cuts. Of course, the handle is octagonal, and in this case, it's carved, so it has facets. It doesn't slip out or anything. It doesn't turn in my hand, which is um, helping with fatigue and doesn't give me any hot spots. I'm very sorry guys for this constant getting out of focus here. So I have this contoured part up here um, with a little bit of a, um, a rise here. I don't contour the bottom on this one like you know that from some of my other knives that I'm contouring the bottom here too which also gives you a great index but in this case if I'm using it here of course I want to have the leverage and, leverage and support. If I'm turning my knife around and this is happening all the time that I'm turning my knife around it might be carving towards me, it might be carving away from me or using some kind of pivot method, whatever it may be, where by the way the thumb scallops come into play that I place on all my knives. Um, nothing more annoying than getting a sore thumb from having to put it here and the corners just start digging into your finger. In any case, turning the knife around I don't need any point here or any uncomfortable contouring piercing into my palm all day long. So it gives me a very nice round surface, it's feeling very comfortable for all of the chest lever grips that I'm using a lot, the pivoting grip grips that I'm using a lot. So it basically combines the two designs of a contoured um, coke bottle shape handle so to say and a classic or traditional box of barrel shaped, not box, but rather barrel shaped handle. So this is one design that um, I have developed over the last few you know, years of trying different styles and um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be sticking with. So I call this my dog leg handle style. Um, you're seeing it already on quite a few of my hunting knives anyways. In any case, the com combination of this blade with this handle design has worked really really well for me. Reed definitely does his research very well and his execution of blades in general is is really pretty incredible I have to say. Reed's attention to detail, his research, his steel treatment, um, his production process, the way he's making every single blade. If you follow you can follow that on Instagram it is incredible, it's inspiring. Um, these knives are really, really well made and I would say the top of the line um, together with maybe Nick West Westerman and a couple of other makers. Um, the incredible thing about Reed for me as well is the speed at which he was able to um, get to this level but it probably has all to do with his background as a maker for many many years as well as his approach to to making things and planning and his very very um, efficient and, and uh, concentrated ex execution. There's just so much focus in these knives well, I hope this was a good look for you guys into um, this kind of Sloyd knife by Rich Schwartz. I have to say this is a blade. He makes incredible 
specimen of these knives with different handles and sheaths um, constantly trying to evolve um, he was so kind to send me one of these blades as part of a collaboration or exchange we did trying to learn from each other So check read out please on um, on Instagram on the reach words I'm gonna put the link into the description box. These knives are a little bit hard to get. Um, Neil I read is, is always trying to keep up with batches, but they sell out very very quickly. So it's not the most accessible knife I would say. It is definitely affordable for what you get, but. Um, as with everything worth having it's not that easy to get at the moment but I think Reed is cranking out as many batches as he can and um, you might get lucky so check him out I just want to finish off this video with a little bit of carving footage and yeah thank you for the support thanks for tuning in today for this uh, one more part of my spoon carving kit video Thank you, Reed. Thanks for being such a great friend, support, and uh, craftsman. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe to the channel. Because that's, I've, I always say this is the mutual benefit we get from each other. I'm trying to crank out stuff for you guys. So if you like it, please take the moment and subscribe and leave a happy thumb. Okay, you guys have a good day, wherever you are, stay safe, and I'm going to see you next time. Cheers. The tip of this knife is allowing for absolutely incredible detail carving. Really have to say guys, and if I didn't mention that in the video. Um, another thing I did not really mention in the video is that the bevels on this knife are a little bit steeper. Um, and at a bigger angle than what Reed does at the moment, so I think he optimized his heat treat further and got the, the self-confidence to uh, really put a little bit shallower angle on this. So this is already really slicey and nice with a lot of control, but his current style is... Uh, even shallow in the angle so what can I say it's a very very enjoyable knife these top of the line knives are all so great um, as well with the edge retention um, I really like Moros I gotta say that as well I really like 
Nick Westerman, some Sloyd knives, of course. And there's a little bit of a trade-off. Um, Nick Westerman's knife is from um, from Silver Steel. Ah, sorry, from Ball Bearing Steel 52100. It would keep, I would say, that it keeps the edge a hair longer than this uh, this knife. But it's also way harder to resharpen. So would I choose one over the other? No. Absolutely not. It really comes down to what is more accessible for you in your area. I would always recommend to support a local craftsman. If you're a beginner carver, um, a mora is probably the right way to go because you're going to have a harder time resharpening this one. But hey, if you know that, that spoon carving is going to be a thing for you, um, don't hesitate. Get one of um, reeds if you're in the US I would say or um, however you wanna wanna do that um, whatever maker fascinates you more um, I like them both and I would say um, they're very different still although it's just a Sloyd knife and the overall design is very similar um, There is a difference in the making, in the materials, in the approach. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this. It performs really nice. Um, I've carved tons of spoons with this one already. It has been with me for several months, otherwise, I would not talk about it. And, uh, yeah, I've got tons of stock to make, so I'm gonna get to it. A little bit more talking, but now with this, I want to wish you a great day wherever you are, and uh, take care.